Hello there, it's Wednesday the 7th of November 2012. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. We're doing two shorter shows a week now, boys and girls. I think, I think the hour-long shows might just be a little bit too much for you. Was it, were you sort of dropping off? Because that's what... That's what the that's what the audience retention figures were telling me. People people were falling asleep while we were doing it now, so so they are uh, slightly uh, smaller now. And I just want to say, um, have you seen the new James Bond film Skyfall? Oh. You, have you seen it yet? Now, I, I actually saw it the Sunday before last, but I didn't want to talk about it um, to give people a chance to watch it. There's nothing worse, um, I think, than going to see a film that someone's already told you about. I do hate that, don't you? And I hate it, you know, when the newspapers and they, they get like insider information and they think they think they're doing us a favour by telling us what's going to be in the film or the TV show or the musical or whatever. And I just think that spoils it for people. There's one, there's one paper in particular that's, that's good at doing that, and that's The Star. Uh, we have a paper called The Star here in the UK. And they're forever telling you what's going to be happening on Doctor Who or, or, or Coronation Street or Easter. I don't watch any of the soaps myself. I watch Casualty. Or or things like and there's a website as well, Digital Spy. I don't know if you've heard of that. They often uh, tell you what's going to come up in a TV program or a film. Although often they, to be fair, they often put on Digital Spy. Um, this this article contains spoilers. If you don't want to read them, don't click. Which is great. I mean, well, you know, which is fantastic. But I do make a point of not reading. Uh, articles and that about films and that's why I didn't mention this film last week so I'm about to tell you okay I am about to tell you what some bits and pieces of the film over the next couple of minutes so if you don't want to hear about those just go forward shall we say two minutes two or three minutes OK, I shall leave I shall leave a little gap here uh, for you to pause and to go forward two minutes all right, and those of you still with me, we can we can talk about it. Skyfall, absolutely brilliant. One of the best James Bond films I have ever seen. Now, I I got to admit, I wasn't keen on Daniel Craig at first as the James Bond. Certainly, the was it the last film Quantum of Solace or whatever it was called? For me, that was one of the worst James Bond films I have ever seen. There was no humour in it, and you just couldn't follow what was going on. It would go from one scene... It was like it would like someone had shot all the scenes out of sequence and just thrown them all together, uh, you know, hobbled them all together somehow. And you didn't have a clue what was going on. We just couldn't follow the film. It was too complicated. And, of course, I blame that all on Daniel Craig, which was very, very unfair of me. Very unfair. Nothing to do with him at all. It was the writing. The writing was awful. Awful. You know, if you're going to put an entertainment film out there, for Christ's sake, let us be able to follow it. I mean, a lot of the Doctor Whos have been like that recently. Although this series, I have to admit, this, this, the most recent Doctor Whos were a lot easier to follow than the ones that were on there last year. I nearly gave up on that, to be honest. You don't want to sit there. I mean, come on, let's be honest. You don't want to sit there in front of the telly and have to think too much on a Saturday night, do you? Eh? Well, I mean, that Quantum of Solace was just like that. It was too complicated, and you didn't have a blooming clue what was going on, and it wasn't funny at all. Well, let me tell you, Skyfall, it's back to how it was. It really is. You could follow the entire film from beginning to end, and there was items of humour in there. There really was. The one that had me absolutely hilarious was when, um, uh, when the... Uh, the, the villain now, who was he? Can't remember, but he was a bit gay, wasn't he? He was a bit gay, and he sat, he sat James Bond down onto the chair, put two hands on his on his knees while while James Bond was tied to this chair, uh, and, and and kind of said something. I can't remember what it was. It was something quite gay, and uh, he said, uh, you know, sort of like perhaps you'd like to come back with me or something like that. Um, there's a there's a first time for everything, and James Bond looked him straight in the eyes and says, "Who says it's the first time?" <laughs> I love it. It was ever so good. And then uh, there was a little bit of comedy where they introduced the new Q, 
who was like this young, geeky lad with glasses. Nothing like the old Q, which was an, an old man, you know. Uh, I do believe he died. Wonderful act, bit of acting he did, but I, I think he's gone now. He's left this world. But he was fantastic doing Q when he was there. Anyway, so they've given it to a young boy, and um, there was a little bit of tate I tate going on between James Bond and saying, you know, uh, you're a little bit too young to be doing this job. And the young lad would say, you know, you're a bit too old to be doing that job. And they got on quite well. Now, that was really good. There was, I do believe there was a couple of gadgets back in there as well. Nice to see some gadgets coming back in. There was a lot of humour in it. It was really quite funny. But the main part of the story um, was was about the character Miss Moneypenny, M. M, as played by the fantastic Judy Dent. It was fantastic. Now, I'm going to tell you what happens at the end. So if you're still with me and you don't want to know, just go forward a couple of minutes, OK? I'm going to tell you that now. Be warned. All right. So um, most of the film was about Judy Dench. And at the end, at the end, I couldn't believe it. She dies. M dies. Judy Dench is no longer in James Bond. That was the last we're going to see of her. And I, my, my mouth just dropped open. I couldn't believe it. Because, of course, you know, I suppose if you'd read all the articles in the newspaper and that, you, you would have known all about it. But I made sure I didn't. And I've just told you, if you're still watching this, you've oh, I wish he didn't tell us. I did tell you I was going to tell you, OK? So please don't complain about that. But, yeah, she dies. I couldn't believe it. No more Judy Dench on James Bond. I mean, Mama Life is practically over, dear. Oh, she's a fantastic, fantastic actress. She really is. I hope she's going to be in some more stuff. I hope she's not going to retire. You know, there's certain people in this life, you know, big star, proper stars. I'm talking proper stars. Judy Dench is a star. OK, you know, Barry Manilow is a star. Isn't he? Um, oh, I've forgotten his name now. The James Bond bloke. Ha! His name's gone right out of my head. I mentioned it a minute. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig is a star, isn't he? These are stars. And you, you don't really want them to retire. It's Roger Moore. Roger Moore. He, he was my favourite James Bond. He is a star. And you don't want these people to ever retire, do you? I suppose it's a bit... Is that a little bit... Um, is that a little bit... Um, is that a bit selfish of me to say that? These people deserve to retire, don't they? They deserve to, to reap the rewards of the wonderful entertainment that they provided to us all these years. I don't want them to retire. I want to see Judy Dench. OK, so she's out of James. I want to see her on more TV stuff now or more films. Do you remember that other film about the hotel, the exotic, the Marigold Exotic or the Exotic Marigold Hotel? Fantastic film. She was in that, wasn't she? Eh? With, um... With that one woman from Downton Abbey, um, Maggie Smith. Ah, oh, fantastic films. Absolutely fantastic. We want to see more of these people. So, so that's Skyfall. If you haven't seen it, well, now you know what's going to happen. Please go and see it. It's, it's really, really good. Um, I can't believe already we've come to the end of the series of Dallas, which is on tonight, Wednesday night. It's our last uh, end of season Program on Channel Five Wednesday night at uh, nine o'clock tonight at nine o'clock. It's the very, it's the last Dallas of this series. Can't believe we've seen an entire series of Dallas, and it's been really good. Especially last week, we all thought we thought that it had all become a little bit soft, you know. And 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 um, uh, uh, Jr. had given South Fork back to Bobby, and and Bobby was being nice, and and the two cousins, Christopher. And um, J.R. Jr., John Ross, um, were being nice to each other. And then at the end of the show, they'd all got, it, it, it all kicked off again. So, fan, absolutely really enjoyed Dallas. Don't understand, well, I do understand why they didn't get many viewers here in the UK. It's on the wrong channel. You've got to have that on BBC One or ITV, Dallas. Uh, but I guess it's going to stick on um, ITV. Um, another show that's come to the end is Watchdog. I don't know if it's me. But do these TV series seem to be getting shorter to you? <laughs> I, I'm sure, like, if something started in September, it would go through to Christmas. I'm sure that's how it used to be. And yet, I'm sure Watchdog has only been on for about eight weeks. And Dallas, eight weeks? 
Nine weeks? Ten weeks? Doesn't seem to have been on that long, and we're already at the end of this series. So what are we going to do for two weeks now? I'm, I'm sure TV series are getting smaller and smaller. They did, uh, I don't know if you watch uh, Doctor Who, um, but they did it to that as well. That was split up into two short series, so we got like five shows and five shows, or six and six. We had six in the spring and six in the autumn. I don't like that at all. Do you? What's the idea of that then, splitting everything up like that? Awful. Uh, of course, one of the tragedies on television at the moment is the X Factor. It is dire. It is absolutely dire. You've got staged arguing now going on between the judges. And it, it, I mean, it really is awful. I don't know what the hell's happened to that. And you've got people last week. There was a girl singer. Can't remember her name. Think she was black, um, but she was a damn good singer. And there was an average, a very, very average boy band. They were okay, but they were average. And anyway, they were in the final together. I, I'm not a watcher of X Factor, but I kind of flick through it now and again. I flick through all the crap that the judges are coming out with and just watch little bits of the songs. And... They were in a sing-off together, so it was going to be one or the other. And I thought, well, you know, the girl, the girl was the better singer. Did her name begin with E? Can't remember, Eve, E, no, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking of my, um, my nephew's daughter. Uh, I can't remember what her name was now. But anyway, she was by far the better singer. And they voted the boy band to stay in. They was okay, but they certainly weren't the best. Out of those two, that girl should have gone through. Not only that, there's some gay bloke called Rylan, also who's in this competition, and he is just awful. He really is awful. And he's been in the papers a lot, getting drunk and, and all this, at, and, and, and falling out over the street and all this, that and the other, and, and, and generally, you know, being badly behaved. Why on earth is he still in it? But maybe that's that's what it's all for. Do they stage all this so that it gives them publicity to go in the papers and try and pick up any more viewers? Because they're way down on the viewing figures. I think they're down about one and a half to two million people. You know, and when when ITV starts getting like that, you know, the advertisers will, will will want a bit of a discount because they're obviously not getting the reach that they want for these um for these programs. I mean, it really is dire the X Factor this year. So there we are. Uh, I gather Strictly Come Dancing is beating it at the rated. I don't watch Strictly Come Dancing. It doesn't really have much uh, interest to me. Of course, Merlin is still on. I'm pleased to say Merlin is still on. And um, we've got an email here from Marge. A couple of emails, actually, from Marge. And I've got the other one from um, uh, Jeffrey that we finished up on the article. That's coming up a, a little bit later on in the show. Talking of Merlin... Let's read this from uh, Marge. And uh, she says, Funny. Hi, Chris. Funny, I just finished watching an episode of Merlin. Uh, 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 Marge is in the States in uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping. I always like to sing. I love that tune, don't you? And uh, we've been talking about Merlin quite a lot on, on the, this show. Merlin is uh, probably my favourite programme on the television. It's on BBC One on Saturday nights and it runs right the way through until Christmas. She says, funny, I just finished watching an episode of Merlin and you'd mentioned it right off at the beginning of one of your shows. I love the new season they are dueling. Really great in the special effects. The dragon looks a bit more mouth... Malvolent, however. Do you know, I don't even know. What does that mean, malvolent? <laughs> I'm sorry, I am a bit thick, I'm afraid, Marge. Marge says, I am able to get most of the shows you watch there in online archives, and we do have BBC America as well. Now, I must admit, most British comedy, in my opinion, are not funny to me. I suppose if you raise that environment, it would be entertaining, except for 40 Towers. 
Monty Python, Are You Being Served? And maybe that one, can't recall the name, where this couple live with no electricity and he grows stuff in his backyard and his wife cooks on a wood stove they installed. Yeah, that's the good life. That's really old, that is. That's a 70s number, the good life. I know the the tune, Marge. Is it that one? The Good Life? With uh, Actually, there's a Marge in that, isn't there? There's a Marge in Good Life. She's really posh. That's a really old series from the 70s. It's a great series. Great series. Marge says, His neighbours and friends... Uh, his neighbours are friends. That's, that's Marge and... Um, is it Geoffrey? Marge and Geoffrey? Jeffrey, is it Marge and Jeffrey? His neighbours are friends, but they fuss about the animals in the yard. You may know the show. Yeah, that, that is the good life. And Mr Bean is my favourite. Oh, we like Mr Bean. We like Mr Bean. He's had two films out, by the way, Marge. Have you seen the Mr Bean films? You must go and look those up if you haven't seen them, darling. Marge goes on to say, I have not seen Dallas yet. I don't have cable television and only antenna, but I need to fix it to get better reception. I don't have cable TV, Marge. No, I don't. I'm not paying for television. Why should I pay? No, we got Freeview here, which is all through the uh, TV aerial. And we also have FreeSat, which is a, a free satellite system. I've got both of those. And I, do, I don't pay for any television. No, absolutely not. No, I'm not paying for television. She says, this new digital viewing one needs a better quality antenna to pick up the channels. On air, I get 25 channels, but most, except maybe three or four, won't stay in view. Oh, get your aerial sorted, Marge. Well, you must get your aerial sorted, darling. That's the way, that's way more channels than anyone needs. What, 25? Oh, I agree. I agree. We've got loads of free channels here. Why do you need to pay for television? You don't need to. When I was a kid... Uh, I have to tell you, once I did have pay television, years and years ago now, and I had all the movie channels, the only channels I didn't have was sport, because I've no interest in sport whatsoever, uh, watching it. Oh, I do swimming and cycling, as you know, but uh, uh, watching sport has no interest to me, to me, to me at all. Um, uh, but uh, I had all these channels. And then one year I sat down and I worked out how many films I watched in one year, and it was three one, two, three. I watched three films in a year and I thought, what a waste of money that is. So I'm paying all that money and I only watched three films and I cancelled it all there and then. And I, I never, never, um, never went back to it. I always get letters from them, you know, telling me, would I, would I like to restart my subscription for half the price for three months and all this old crap? No, thank you. I'm very happy with my free television. Thank you. Marge said, when I was a kid, we had three channels and great shows. Same here. Same here. We had three channels and all great shows. You had a job choosing what to watch. You really did. Not so much the case now, I'm afraid. Now they have tons of channels and it takes forever to find a good show. Exactly the same as it here, Marge. I do recall what I think is Upstairs Downstairs, which was a good show. Again, a a show from the 70s, Marge. And a really good show. Very, very good indeed. Uh, It was, they did remake two lots of Upstairs Downstairs recently on the BBC. uh, But unfortunately, they've dropped it. And I gather they dropped it because they weren't happy with the viewing figures in comparison to the viewing figures of Downton Abbey. They they just weren't happy, so they dropped it, which was a shame because it was very well made. I I, enjoy, I really enjoyed the remakes of um, Upstairs Downstairs. It, it, I think it was all new. Sto- it was all new stories, but um, sadly they dropped it, and 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 that's the end of that, really. She says, I relate to higher hands since I'm a professional housekeeper. Do you watch Fringe there? Uh, Don't know what Fringe is. Don't know what that is. I'm into all sci-fi shows myself and grew up a Trekker. Oh, we love sci-fi shows. We really do. I love Star Trek. I love original Star Trek, Next Generation and Voyager. I don't really care for Deep Space Nine or especially Enterprise. That was a load of crap Enterprise. Oh, it was awful, awful. She said, Chris, I have no ads on the internet because I use an ad blocker. Not even on YouTube, but I'm a computer um, freak. 
freak. So know how to wiggle my way around the net. I do, yeah, I do get annoyed with ads that come out. And that, that you seem to get these flash ads come out now. It doesn't seem to weigh a block of those ones. I'm still watching and also now listening to MP3s of your archived video shows. I was wondering, did you move to another house since 2008? I love that view of the house and the yard. No, no, I'm still in the same place. Still in the same place, but I got rid of the shed in the garden. That's probably why you saw one of these shed uh, uh, shows that I did in the garden without the shed. Yeah, that, that's why. Do you wear makeup when you do the videos or are your eyes naturally like that? I ne I've never worn makeup. My eyes... <laughs> what do you mean are my eyes like this? <laughs> I've never... Look, let me, if I wet my finger, okay, rub it on... Look, rub it on my eyes, nothing comes off. No makeup on my face at all. Perhaps I should do. I look younger then, wouldn't I? You look like you have eyeliner on. I know some people use stage makeup. I'm not making fun, just curious. If you did, so you would show up better on camera. No, no makeup here, I'm afraid at all. No makeup on little old me. Savings bonds for the kiddies. Or sippy cups with their favourite cartoon characters is my suggestion for Christmas present for babies. Thank you for those. Um, I still haven't decided what I'm going to buy these babies for Christmas yet, but um, I, I, I have thought about savings bonds. I don't know, you know. Um, difficult to know what to do there. She says, um, Marge says, hopefully I too can save up for an iPhone. I have a phone that's for the military. You can even drop it in water for 30 minutes without damaging it. The Motorola Quan Quantiso. But it's one my brother bought for me. Well, I haven't heard of that one. Talking of iPhones, you know I've ordered that iPhone. It's still not here. Two weeks now that's been. They say they've run, oh, excuse me. They've run out of stock. I can't get my iPhone 5 here. I'm waiting for it. Waiting. <laughs> I, should, I should be... You know, I shall be gone by the time they send that. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that now. Oh, touch wood, I'm not. Touch wood, I'm not. I do intend to stay here for a little bit longer. Um, she says, Chris, I don't want to be a DJ. I just mean, in general, do you teach? No, I, no, I don't teach. I don't think I'd be a very good teacher. I don't think I'm a very patient person. You know, I certainly find it difficult to work with other people. You know, some people... Um, how can I explain it? Like, people want to, like, do something that I already do. I, I would find that very difficult. Now, I, I like to be doing what I do and, and kind of left alone to what I do, yeah. Um, she said, that's a cute picture you drew. Sorry I woke up knowing where the cowboy was. I can't remember what we were talking about there, actually. Um, cowboy. Can't remember. Does your cat, Katie, go outside? Yes, she does. She does go outside quite a lot. She's in the garden um, and in the front bit all the time. Be careful of those scabs if you haven't seen a vet. They could be ringworm. Is it circular like little dots with a dot in the centre? No, it's not. No, it's not, I'm pleased to say. You may know what ringworms look like. Hypo hyperthyroidism can cause skin issues. So that's got to be what it is, I think. But um, just to let you know, um, I will be taking the cat back to the vet in a few weeks' time because when, when her pills run out, her little pills, I've got one more bottle of pills, then she has to go back again for blood tests before I get another prescription for the pills, all right? Chris, I know now why I like your show so much. You like having an interactive diary. I'll tell you of things in my life and you reply back to them. But then again, I do get to enjoy the aspects of your life as well and see a life that I will never get to experience myself. It's a mutual benefit that way. I like to hear about other people's lives. Believe me, I do. It's fantastic when someone writes, and especially someone you've never known before, they suddenly write in and say, oh, hello, I've been listening or watching your show for a couple of years now. This is the first time I've written. I'm so-and-so. I've written in. I'm so-and-so. I do this. That's wonderful. It's wonderful. Do you still have a postal address that you give out? Yes, I do have a new postal address. And I can't believe I mentioned that a couple of shows ago. And then I, then I said, I'll, I'll give it to you. And then I completely forgot to give it out. So if you get a pen, I will give you out an address where you can send stuff in the post. OK, um, that's it. Marge says, you said something about gay men not being real men. I don't think that's true. I find that raising a child to be a man or woman in stereotyping is detrimental to the child. 
If a boy wants to play with dolls, I say let him. If a girl wants to be a tomboy, let her as well. This buying blue for boys and pink for girls again, I think, is ludicrous. I hate pink. I don't have a lot of experience around gay or straight people. Uh, but to be a man who can wear pink shirts is a real man, straight or gay. Here, if a man wears pink, he may just about be beat up or worse. Is that right? Oh, not here. Pink is quite a, 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 a bit of a colour with the straight boys round here. No, I don't... I don't um, uh, I, gay men are not real men, are they, dear? This is what I'm looking for, a real man. Dear. I don't want some hairdresser or something like that. That's what I mean. It's a bit tongue-in-cheek, Marge. You're going to have to get used to this English sense of humour. It's all very tongue-in-cheek. What do you pay for having your hair cut? Oh, um, nine pounds. So that's about $15. It's so short you could buy a hair shaver and do it yourself and save pounds. Oh, I can't, no, I can't. it wouldn't work, dear. It wouldn't work. I wouldn't be able to do it. She says, you know who I would love to do my hair is Fabio. Who's Fabio? Who's Fabio? I don't even know that. Who is this Fabio person? Chris, if you will shave on the new moon to the full moon, which is called waxing your hair, it will go back faster. Oh, you don't believe all those old wife towers, do you, Marge? Eh? But if you shave or cut your hair on the waning, full moon to new moon, you will find your hair not growing back as fast and won't have to cut it as often. This works, believe me. Are you, ta are you taking a mick? I don't believe you. I don't believe you, Marge. I can cut your hair. I have some poodle cutting shears. I can give you a great poodle haircut. Oh, I don't know about that. Am I starting to look like a poodle on air? Am I really? <laughs> I do hate it when you scratch your nose, hun. I just said when I do a marathon of your videos, I was just noticing you scratching your nose. I never meant to say that. I don't like it. I have allergies myself, so I know what you go through. Yeah, my nose, it's not too bad today. I haven't scratched it hardly at all today, have I? Not, I'll scratch it just for you now. I think it's the little hairs that sort of grow inside it. You know someone is a dear friend when they can be relaxed enough when they are around you. You can burp, sneeze, pass wind, whatever needed. That is a true friend. Oh, my, my friend, he's got, he's got an overactive nose. You can't do anything without him realising it. Gets on your nose and he said, have you just done that? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and it, makes you, it actually makes you feel quite unwelcome when someone says that. Um... More to love, you're not fat. Oh, I am a bit fat, Marge. It's all round my ways to hate it. You know, Chris, take 12 stones of fat and 12 stone of muscle. Which weighs more? Well, it weighs the same, doesn't it, dear? Weighs the same. You just say you aren't getting some muscles. Ha <laughs> ha! I know you have United Kingdom viewers, so I didn't want to confuse them saying pounds. Well, that, we, we know pounds. There's 14 pounds in a stone, okay? So 12, 12 times 14 is what I weigh. Do you want to know what that is? Where's my calculator? 12, 12 times 14. Oh, I've got a solar calculator here. 12 times 14. So I weigh 168 pounds. Is that, how does that sound to you, Mart? Many women who are also called pretty love themselves so much more than anyone else could love them. So self-involved. Oh, don't we know it? Don't we know it, dear? Not all, but some. Beauty on the outside is not always there on the inside. Oh, we know that, dear. You haven't got to tell any of us that. You've only got to see some of these people on the telly. They are so far up their own asses. it's unbelievable, some of these, some of these so-called pretty people. You know, you, you wouldn't want a relationship. Once they start opening their mouths and you realise what they're like, you wouldn't want to go near them. You really wouldn't. I have no issues from men because I'm poor and ugly. Oh, come on, Marge. You ain't ugly at all. You might be a bit poor, I don't know. But you're certainly not ugly, darling. Most men who come to me say I make a good worker. Itchy nose. I mean, do you make a good worker? Do you work hard, do you? I bet you do, don't you, Marge? Itchy nose means company is coming and he phones. I was, was I scratching my nose and the phone went the other day? Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Um, you can hook up your computer to a television if you have S-Video connection from computer's video card or a TV card that is in the computer. I know computers a bit, and I have mine connected to both a monitor and television. You've got, you've got computers all over your blooming house, haven't you, dear? Eh? 
You forget to give out your post address, or did I miss it in the episode? I did step away a second to go to the kitchen. And that's uh, from Marge. Nice to hear from you, Marge. Here comes the postal address if you want to send anything in. It's Chris Reardon. Chris Reardon. <laughs> Do you know, I forgot. I'm going to have to look this up now. Just a second. Two Brewers. Okay. That's T-W-O Brewers. B-R-E-R. Sorry, B-R-E-W-E-R-S. Two Brewers. All right. 114, 114, Clapham High Streets, London, SW47UJ. All right, if you want to send anything there, that should get to me. Uh, that's one of the places I work, and the manager has kindly said I can put any, any, uh, any letters can go straight to there. Okay, so once again, Chris Reardon, R-E-A-R-D-O-N, two brewers. T W O B R E W E R S, two brewers, 114 Clapham High Street, London, S W 4 7 U J. All right? There you go. Okay, got to say hello to Helen. Helen is one of the people that comes down. Uh, to the quiz show we do at the Mayflower every Tuesday night. And Helen says, my friend's cat problem uh, also had that problem with scabs. They gave him brewer's yeast, the cat, not the friend. <laughs> brewer's yeast, I don't, I don't even know what that is. Is that like the yeast out of packets that you make bread with and that sort of thing? Eh? Hello to Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan, who says, great to hear about your New York trip. Why not produce a little video while you're there for your YouTube subscribers? I intend to do so. Don't you worry about that. I shall be speaking to you from my very posh hotel, my four-star hotel room. Thank you very much. Where am I staying? The, the Manhattan on Times Square. Does anyone know that one? The Manhattan on Times Square. I'm terrible on holiday for filming everything that happens. Sometimes I forget to enjoy the actual holiday. Business class, he says. Very swish. Oh, you've got to save up for that. When it's a long flight, you've got to save up the money for the business class flight. And besides, it's been birthday, so there we are. I've travelled solo in the past few years for myself for similar reasons as you. Friends settle down or can't afford it. But I made some great friends called from a website called TravBuddy.com. It allows you to meet people in their hometowns who can show you places as a local. And you can do the same if they visit your town. Sort of an exchange. So that's, that's a good idea, isn't it? Because I often think, you know, you go to these places and you don't, you don't really experience the true, shall we say, New York or somewhere like that. You experience the um, tourist side of it. If you want to see the real New York, you've got to find someone over there. And I actually have a, uh, there's a few people who watch in New York. Uh, uh, Suko, she knows the New York world. So if I want to go shopping, I say to Suko, OK, Suko, I want to go shopping. Where do I go? And I bet she won't send me to Macy's. She'll send me somewhere out of town. Perhaps I can get, hopefully, the subway will be fixed by then um, after all the hurricane business and all that, and uh, uh, I'll be able to do that. Jonathan says, through the site, a group of us met in Paris. There was a person from India, another from America, another from Indonesia, and then there was me from glamorous Birmingham. Oh, how awful, dear. <laughs> Home of central television and ATV. Despite not knowing each other, we all had a wonderful meal together and we're all still in contact years later. Really great site and it's free. And it was better than watching French TV in my Ibis Hotel. <laughs> oh, good old Ibis. You can't go wrong in an Ibis, can you? Cheap and cheerful. Thanks for the info about the pub quiz and look forward to saying hi. We'll book ahead as it sounds very popular. Have a great weekend and enjoy tonight. From John. Yes, John. Uh, once again, I do do a uh, quiz night Every Tuesday evening, so it's, it's, it's a week away now. Every Tuesday night at the Mayflower in Rotherhithe. Okay, the Mayflower in Rotherhithe in South East London. Tuesday nights between 8pm uh, and 11pm. Uh, All right, now how are we doing on time? I think we're just about out of time, aren't we really? I think we're out of time here. And I did have a, an, another part of the email from young Jeffrey to read. I think I'll save that for the next show, if you don't mind. And also um, one here from Kath 
in Wales. Kathy's a regular correspondent to the show. So I will save on... Uh, I did say I'd read Jeffrey's out, but I, I don't want to make the shows too long because I know some of you get... After a little while, you get a little bit tired of um, uh, listening or watching, all right? Uh, there's one from Millie as well. Millie, again, if it's OK for you... Um, I'll hold this over uh, to the next show on Saturday. If you want to write in, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I hope you're enjoying the shows that are a little bit shorter now, uh, although twice a week. Thanks so much for watching and listening. You can also join me on Facebook. Uh, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. Right? So it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. I'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.